It is that time of the month where we talk about the new Canva features. In this video, I have nine new features to talk about. I will review them. I will show you where you can find them. And we are starting right now. Hey, what's up, guys? Ronnie here. Welcome back to our channel. You are definitely in the right place if you want to learn everything that is new with Canva. This is our playlist, What's Hot in Canva, episode 34 already, where we review every new feature. So before we get started, I have an announcement. We are ready with a brand new membership offer. You'll find it by clicking on that join button that is right there underneath the video next to the subscribe button. We've hired a new person in the team, Kia, who will help us with this membership, like managing it, but also developing and growing it. Through that membership, we want to bring our members some extra value. And that value will be articulated around three different perks. The first one is access to our courses. We plan on publishing all our new courses on YouTube first. That will give us the flexibility to publish faster because our courses are usually quite long and take up to five, six, seven months to fully produce. So by publishing them section one, section two on one month, we can push that on YouTube and give you access faster. So that is the first perk of the membership access to the courses right here on YouTube. Second perk will be to give you access to us. And we plan on doing this through organizing YouTube live sessions, Q&A sessions, at least once a month where you guys can hang out with us and ask us all your questions. And perk number three will be to to develop and give you access to exclusive tools. The first one we have in mind, and I'm sure we'll come up with some new ones in the future, is to give our members access to all of our ChatGPT prompts. We are planning to do this by sharing all our ChatGPT chats, meaning that with a single link, you can directly access our conversation and start leveraging the work that we've done, the prompts that we've built for your own business, for your own personal brand. So that's what we have in store for you in our membership. If you want to check it out, it is that join button right here underneath the video next to the subscribe button. Now, let's dive into these nine new Canva features. The first new feature will be super useful for anyone dealing with physical product. It's called Product Photo App, and it will allow you to quickly bulk edit your product photos. And the feature is going to be available for all Canva users, meaning even if you are a free user, but only on desktop. So via the desktop browser or the desktop app. Now, let me show you how to use it. We are going to start from the Canva homepage and look at the left menu right here. What we are looking for is this item in the menu that says apps. Okay, so click here. So you should see a new menu. And the last item of this menu is called product photos. So that is the feature. Let's click on it. So product photos still in beta magically bulk edit photos to get your products ready for sale. Simply upload photos or folders and we'll perfect them for you. So great. That sounds like a great time saver. We can see here different things like photos that are being taken like so. And then the final result here, we have kind of like photos in a professional studio or setting being displayed. So I'm very curious about this. Let's upload some photos by using this button right here that says choose photos. I'm going to click here. You can select from your uploads or upload new images and you can upload up to 10 images for the bulk edit to work. So I'm going to upload some new images. I have a folder right here that I will open like so. And you see one, two, three, four, five, six. Let me quickly show you some of these photos. So these photos are some photos I took back in the days already, like 2012, I think, when I was in Kenya working with this cooperative recycling all sorts of different materials. So I'm mostly jewelry earrings made out of recycled soda cans like so. So I have these photos here. I'm going to upload all of them straight into Canva. So there you go. The photos are uploaded. So I can move on to step number two, okay, by clicking on next. Select a style for your photo. So you can have white background, 3D shadow, white table, platinum, powder blue, wisteria. So you have different kinds of backdrops, okay? So color backdrops, no backdrops. You can have showcase like this, a wooden table, or all sorts of different backgrounds. Okay, I'm going to go with something simple. Let's try the first one, white background. 
Okay, I'm gonna click on apply and Canva is going to prepare my photos. So I believe a couple of things are being done here. They are going to improve the quality of the photos, like try to enhance the quality resolution of the photos. They're going to maybe get rid of the background, maybe detour them with the background remover. They're going to enhance the colors and present these maybe with some added shadows so they look realistic. All right, so I can see white background, six photos. I have this new tab right here that I can click to see all of my different photos. And I really like the result here. So let's click on the first one and see what it looks like. I would like to bring up the original here. So I'm going to use that in a design, okay, in a presentation, because I want to show you the before and after. So there you go. I have set up a little before and after slide here. So you can appreciate the difference of what has been actually worked with Canva. So I can see I've been completely cleared out. I have a white background right here. So this is much more appropriate for uploading this product on a website, for example, than the original one. Now I want to go back to my folder right here my product photo. So going back to apps, product photos, I like that Canva will just keep all of my folders right here. I have my white background right here. I want to show you another product, this one right here to show you how clean this has been isolated from the background. So this is pretty cool. Let me show you one more way. I would like to try again, like I'm going to go back and choose some photos. So I'm going to upload them. All right, so I'm going to choose something different this time. Let's see these 3D shadows. Okay, I believe Canva will create the shadow. So this imagine is the object they will create this realistic shadow right here. So let's try that. I'm going to apply. Canva is going to process the photos one more time. So there you go. My folder with the shadows is ready. I'm curious to see what they look like. So let's see the first one. All right, so this is what it looks like. Some subtle shadows have been created. Yeah, and I believe that's not too bad. Let's check another product. This one, for example, this one looks great. Like this is very realistic. All right, let's check one last one. This one, for example, we see the shadow. It's not perfect. I mean, the shadow could be a bit better, but I believe this is still work in progress. That's why it's still in beta. But yeah, that was the first feature I wanted to show you guys. I think this is very useful if you need to process large quantities of photos for your e-commerce website. So yeah, it's called Product Photo App and you will find find it right here under your apps on the Canva homepage. Moving on to the second new feature. This one has to do with the way we share links, public links in Canva. So you have a design and you want to share that design with someone, you create a public share link. So they don't have to be in your team to actually see that design. And the feature has got this long name. It's called simplified and revocable public view link sharing. Now that's a bit of a mouthful, but the feature is actually a nice little improvement. And by the way, this feature will be available to all Canva users, so free and pro on all devices. So this is how it works. Let's say I have this design right here. Okay, so it's just a little animated social media post 13 seconds. I want to share that publicly. So I can click the share button and you see you can create a public view link. So that's not new, you could already do that before. But the novelty is the way these links look and the fact that you can actually delete them if you don't want to use them anymore. So first, I'm going to create it. Okay, so there you go. Now I can see my public view link is live. So that's part of the new UI. Canva will indicate that this link is actually live. And I also have this button right here at the bottom that says delete the public view link. That's also part of the novelty. So if I want to delete the link and just click here, I will have this pop up window asking me if I'm sure if I confirm that I want to delete this link, it cannot be undone, blah, blah, Blah. So yeah, delete the public view link, you get the message that it has been deleted and it's not live anymore. So I can create a new one if I wanted to. So yeah, this is quite useful. It will work with the new link that you will be generating in a first time. So they will not roll it back to older links, at least not when they launch the feature it might come later. Now this link sharing redesign and new experience is not only available for public view link, but also for two other types of sharing mechanism. The first one is the template link. And the second one is the present and record 
sharing system, right? So I'm quickly going to show you the template link. I'm not going to do a present and record, but it's pretty much the same thing. So let's say this time, I don't want to share this as a view link, but as a template. I want people to be able to use this as a template, anyone. So again, click on the share button. This time I need to find the template link by clicking on more here. And I should see the template link somewhere here. Yeah, it is here. So template link click on that button. All right, so you can create your template link. There you go, link copied to clipboard. And now you see the template link is live. You can copy the link from here. And similarly, I have a button here that allows me to delete that template link. So I can just cancel the link at any time by simply deleting it with this button, which I'm going to do right now. There you go. So that is a novelty, that is a new feature, and I'm not gonna repeat that feature's name. All right, moving on with the new features, guys. I have two features that are related to the Canva creator profiles. I love that Canva is giving more love to the Canva creators and making our lives as users, searchers of templates easier. So in order to demonstrate these features that are relatively small changes, but do make quite a bit of difference, I'm going to use Diana's creator profile. The first feature consists of showing the complete template count on any creator profile. In order to find that template count, you will have to scroll down a bit to here where you see all items and you should see a number 13,644 templates. So what's the big deal here, Ronnie, showing the number of templates? Well, previously, you need to understand where we are coming from to actually see the value of this feature. Previously, if a creator had published over 100 templates, the number here would only say 100 plus, all right? So you will have no further indication of it's like 101 templates or a million templates. It would just say 100 plus. Now we have a precise number of templates, 13,644, which indicate how prolific is that specific Canva creator. 13,000 templates? That's a lot of template, Ronnie. Well, yes, it is. And that's why you should definitely follow Diana on her Canva creator profile, link in the description, because you too could be benefiting from all of these beautiful templates that she is publishing. So that is the first new feature. It's free, it's available to all users, meaning all users will see that template count. Now, I told you I had two features related to the Canva creators. The second one is called Creator Profile Text Search. Now, this one is actually much more useful. Let me show you what it is. Well, you see this search box right here that says Search Templates by Diana Munoz. Well, previously, there was no such search box right here. The only thing you could do is simply filter the Canva creators assets by using this little drop down menu. So you could only see the templates, the photos or the graphics, but now you can search, which is great because with 13,000 plus template, how do you find what you're looking for? Well, you can use a search box and you can use the search box just like any other Canva search or template search would work. For example, you can search by color, type in pink, for example, enter, and you will see a bunch of Diana's templates that use the pink color. You could search for theme, for example, and type in yoga. You would see a bunch of Canva templates that Diana has made about yoga. Or you could do something different and search for a specific document type, type presentation, and you should see a bunch of presentation design by Diana. So there you go. This little search box right here will save us as users, as searchers of templates, a bunch of time. So there you go. I love that Canva is frequently adding new features to the Canva creator profiles, making the overall experience easier and more comfortable for users. So big thumbs up for that. I do believe the Canva creator program is a great program. The way Canva is leveraging its community of designers to just create all of these additional templates that will resonate with a bunch of different audiences is just a brilliant idea. It's just that the way profiles are built were not optimum so far. So it seems that Canva is trying to fix that. And I think this is a great news. Now, moving on to the next feature. For the next feature, we are coming back to the Canva editor. And this one will make a lot of you guys happy. Now, this feature is called Gradients on Lines and 
borders. So let me show you what I mean by that. So gradient on lines and borders. So we do need a line and probably a shape as well. So I just hit the L key on my keyboard to create a line. So there you go. We have our line and we have our line options right here. So I'm going to click on the line style first to make that line a little bit thicker like this. Could change the style of the line. Okay, let's do like little dashes like that. I could add extremities to my line, which I'm not going to do. But the novelty is that if you click on the line color, the first button right here, and add a new color, you can now add a gradient. So that is the novelty. You can Before you could only add a plain color, but now we can create gradient lines. So just like any other gradient, you can create multiple color gradients. You're not limited to two. So let's create one. So I'm going to click on the first color, use the color picker, use our custom pink, click on the second color, and use our custom blue right here. Now we have a nice gradient in that line that I can stretch and the gradient will adapt which is wonderful. So there you go, a nice gradient line and again like you can play with straight lines and you can add little bullets or arrows at the extremities of this line. This will also adopt the gradient color. All right so that is for lines. Let me delete that and let me show you how you can do the same thing for borders. So for borders obviously we need a shape so let's grab this shape right here. Let's make that the size of the save zone right here so up to here all right I have my shape if I click on it you can see border style so let's click on border style it has no borders so far so let's go for this type of border okay it's currently black I'm going to change the color of the shape to transparent so we can focus on the border all right and again click on the plus button to create your gradient I'm going to click on gradient select the first color this time we could go for a yellow and green gradient. So let's see something like let's be crazy and add a third color. Okay, so let's go for orange. All right, so what is this looking like? All right, so this is not bad. I'm going to make that thicker so you can fully appreciate my beautiful gradient border. So there you go, a neat little design feature. This is available for all Canva users on all devices. The next feature I would like to talk about is related to the model photo editor and it's got to do with background remover. Canva is bringing the adjustment brushes, so the erase and restore brushes of background remover to the model photo editor. Now let me unpack this title and all of these jargon for those of you who don't know what the heck I'm talking about. I'm going to show you. So first, what is the model photo editor? Well, the model photo editor, if you click on projects, from your home page this gives you the ability to browse your assets in canva so if you filter by your images and let's say we click on kia's photo right here kia is our new membership manager who is going to provide all of this value in the membership that you can try and check out with the join button right here so let's try this feature on kia's photo so this is a pro feature because it's linked to the background remover which is a pro feature so it will not work if you are a free user so the novelty is that when you do remove the background, you now have access to the brushes, the erase and restore brushes right here from the model photo editor. It's called model because you can use it as an individual module, a standalone module instead of right inside the Canva editor. All right. So these brushes, you already know them probably. So erase and restore. Erase, for example, in this photo, background remover didn't do a great job at deleting the table right here and the towel. So I should probably do that manually, which I'm not going to do right now because it's kind of like precision work. Oops, sorry, Kia, I just erased a part of your arm right here. So yeah, erase and restore. If you want to restore, you could restore Kia's arm like so. But yeah, the brushes are now available here in the model photo editor. That is the new feature. And Kia, if you're watching, sorry for erasing your arm. I promise we are going to retouch your photos in a more professional way. Maybe just not live while shooting a video. 
platform. The next new feature is called Translate for Canva Docs. Canva is bringing their AI translator to their Canva Docs. So let's see how it works. So I have this Canva Doc right here, which I didn't create. This is a template from their library. I want to show you how you can start using the Translate app on this document. So in order to translate this document, you will need to go to your apps button right here. So click on apps and then locate the translate app right here. So from here, you'll have to select the language you want to translate to. So I want to translate into French. There you go. And the text, you can simply, I believe, select it here. Yes, you can select on the document itself. So let's get started. Let's translate that. Commençons. Yeah, commençons is let's get started or commencer, commençons, they both work. All right, so this works fine. You can translate part of your document titles or the entire thing. For example, let's translate these two bullet points, French. Yeah, why not? Or well, let's try another language. Let's try... I don't know, something that I understand otherwise doesn't make much sense. Um, oh, you know what? We have a lot of Indian viewers on the channel. So I'm going to translate that into Hindi, okay? And you guys can let me know in the comment section if it's correctly translated. So I will have no idea. So <laughs> I will count on you. Yeah, there you go, Hindi translation. Let me know if this is properly translated in the comment section below. And this is a great opportunity for me to thank our Indian audience, which I know you guys are the second largest viewership of this channel. Okay, so yeah, thank you for your support. We appreciate you. Cannot wait, actually, Diana and I to go back to India. All right, so this was Translate and our little love moment for India. Let's move on to the next feature, which also has to do with translation. The next feature is called Translate in the Contextual Menu. It is available to all users, so pro, free, on all platforms and all devices. And it is a nice user experience improvement that consists of giving us the Translate app right in the contextual menu. So what does Canva mean when they refer to the contextual menu? It is that menu that you can call by right-clicking on stuff. Like you right-click on this element or this element, you have a menu right here. So the novelty, the new feature, is that you now have a translate text option right here. So if I want to translate this text, I can do so from the contextual menu. So it will bring up this menu right here. And from here, I can decide to translate into a specific language. Okay, so from here, I see I have two different tabs. Let's start from the top of this new menu that popped up right here. So let's explore settings first. I see reduce font size to fit because when you translate text into another language, it is possible that the translation will be longer or shorter because some languages are just longer or shorter than others. So this option right here will just resize my font size to fit the actual design, which I believe is a good feature to have turned on. And then duplicate page when translating will simply, instead of replacing the text in the current page you are working on, it will create, duplicate the page and offer you a translated version of that page, which I also believe is a good feature to have turned on. All right, back to translate. Let's select what we want to translate. Let's say we want to select everything, maybe not the website. Okay, so website is here, I'm going to deselect the website and translate that into Spanish. See how it goes. All right, translate. So what Canva is going to do is to create an extra page. So there you go. Page number three, Spanish. Interesado en trabajar juntos. Yep. O trabajar con nosotros. Trabajar juntos. That's good. The name of the company. Contáctenos. Si. Diseñador, gerente, creador. Okay. So this has been properly translated and it was super easy for me to do so before or I would have had to head over the apps button right here, go to translate in order to access this menu. All right, so now I can simply right click translate and I have access to the same menu right here. So here again, Canva is making our lives as users easier by reducing the number of clicks. I'm all for that. And the last new feature for today is a new page limit increase in your Canva documents. Previously, we could go up to 300 pages. Now you can go up to 350. So that's 50 more pages. So Canva is just giving us more pages in every document type, which is 
great. So in order to verify this, you could simply get into this grid view and just duplicate pages until you get to 350. I'm not going to do so because this would simply be a waste of time for everyone. But trust me, you can now have 350 pages on your Canva documents. And that's it, guys. These were the nine new Canva features for this month. I hope you enjoyed the tutorial. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so yet. Check out the membership via the join button. And I'm going to leave you with the rest of the What's Hot episode in this playlist right here in case you miss one of our previous episodes.